Welcome back to Orchid Delirium. I'm Brenda and today I'm troubleshooting my Dendroculum bicolossum. I've had long-term problems with this one. I started actually repotting it uh, before I decided to uh, film it. So I just have my pictures from my log. But I just have had so many problems with this. And in this pot there are two individuals and one of the bundles little bunches of bulbs is um, failing it dropped all its leaves within the last week or so or the previous week um, and so i was leaving it alone um, just to see if it would put out a new growth and instead it started to turn brown uh, some of the bulbs started rotting off and I thought well maybe it's just the older bulbs but it started to go from the center and kind of radiate out so I decided to take it out of its pot and um, I was going to instead mount that struggling piece onto a piece of bark because um, they do like to stay moist and um, I was always very hesitant to put it on a mount because I didn't think that I could control the moisture so well um, but now with my high humidity temp up and going I felt like I have maybe an opportunity to try and get it going on a mount I was investigating the more rotten pieces um, just to kind of see what all was going on it got very mushy and soft and uh, once I started dissecting it, I realized that there was no differentiation between uh, young bulbs and older bulbs as far as the root growth, uh, as far as the rot was going. Um, it seemed like it was affecting just the plant in general. So I did treat it with um, some of my favorite um bacterial side or whatever it's called it's my Bayer three in one I guess now it's called bio advanced um, I did not put any Fizan on it because it just has such a drying effect that I just didn't want to put this plant through any more struggles these are new growths that just failed immediately and my thinking was always that anytime I get any any moisture on the top part of the plant the new growths will fail and rot so that's been the other thing that's kept me from mounting this because um, I do soak a lot of my mounts I'm trying to be more careful now that I keep them in a high humidity tent as far as um, trying to put water right on the base of the plant but um, so I'm not too sure what's gonna happen with this mount um, but I did nip pieces off and I was looking for the dreaded F Fusarium and I did not find signs of it though there is some darkening discoloration on the rhizome um, it was it just looked like you know like a bark like a hardening of the exterior of the rhizome it didn't look like anything more um, involved like I'm so glad it wasn't Fusari I mean you can see here that it's just um, natural darkening of like the exterior of the rhizome um, so I did check over the bad bits first and I started checking over the parts that I thought looked okay I selected this piece of bark mostly because it was like the last piece I have <laughs> but it has lots of nooks and crannies for roots to um, travel so I think they'll be happy there if the plant recovers I was checking out my pot um, just to see what all was going on and though this piece looks a little healthier it, these are um, some kind of leaf burn that it came with so these um, discolored leaves are actually over a year old at this point so you can tell that the other individual was healthier though this one has more bulbs so um maybe this one's just been trying to survive somehow and um so the way that i was um tackling this was that i was going to um take off as many of the dried roots i'm so sorry my hand was in the way i was 
so selfish in filming. I wanted to see and I forgot that I, the point was to show you. Um, so my hand is uh, the co-star in this filming, but I nipped off as many of the roots as I could. None of them were viable, to be honest, but I did want to leave a little something to um, be able to uh, attach it with. I didn't want to um, restrict the rhizome at all with any tightening of any kind of um, uh, fishing line or zip tie, you know, for attaching it to the mount. So I wanted to make sure that I attached it to the roots. And you can see the growth pattern and the rhizome. But I was trying to find a which one was like the newer bulb um, with the pattern of growth so that I could leave that part exposed. I don't see this plant from what I could tell. The new growths are always very soft and um, pliable. I don't see them being able to hit something hard like the cork and try to manipulate itself out. I see it getting stuck and being stunted and uh, aborting. So I wanted to make sure that I found the right side and I don't know that I did, but we can always hope for the best, right? So I'm just wetting down some zombie moss, which is dried sphagnum moss. So it is not alive. It um, has been dried and supposedly that makes it safe to be shipped around the world without any kind of permitting or um, restrictions from agriculture. So this is would be the most common moss you can find unless you find a cultivator of live moss or seeds, which is hard for me to find. I actually did find some, but it was being grown outside, so I didn't trust that it was pest free. So here I've placed the larger piece of the three healthiest looking chunks right in the middle to grow across. I do feel that um, I was able to find the pattern of growth and so this one I'm just inspecting more and I do see an eye there but I just uh, I don't have that much faith that it's got any more growth on there but it could possibly be that that's where the latest growths were trying to come from um, this piece I don't know if dendroculum is able to like if they have more active eyes or if they can develop a new growth or if all the eyes fail, like that's it for that bundle. So um, there's a lot of questions here that I think we'll soon find the answers to because I haven't uh, been able to find anything online. Now, I did find that uh, it is highly recommended that these are watered from beneath, so like soaking, and um, because you don't like it's just known it's part of its reputation to not wet it or submerge this or anything like that. So I felt like I've been doing that, but occasionally I'll forget that, you know, and I'll hang a plant or something. Some water will get on it. So I haven't been like the best at it, but even one little accident, my goodness, this plant, and it's labeled as a beginner plant, <laughs> which I don't know, but I do love the tiny little sprig of, um, I guess they call it coarse corkscrew. I refer to it as helix, um, a flower pendant that comes out. They have a spicy scent. I really, really, really enjoy these. And I would have more dendroculums because there's so much variety out there. In fact, um, Orchid Alley, Kauai Orchid Alley has a pack of like, a variety of them you could buy and it's reasonably priced um, but anyway I would love to get more but I just have been so challenged with this one that I just think that I would not be a good orchid mommy to those but here they are mounted and if you would um, <laughs> if you would uh, give me a little bit of patience and uh, I'm really just looking filming over all the bulbs because I was really interested to document um, the changes, positive or negative. And, you know, this has just been one plant that has challenged me so much. And I'm honestly like I have very little faith in this one um, making it for me. But, you know, we do what we can. And I guess 
Um, we'll see. I did film this last week, so I was holding on to it. I didn't, I had part, it partially edited so I could see the difference and give it a week. And here you can already tell there's some browning on some of the bulbs that I kept. I, you know, I just, hmm. <laughs> They don't look so great. I, they really don't have any roots, but in this high humidity tent, I would have hoped that the ambient humidity would keep them from desiccating. Um, I do moisten the moss just to encourage them to come on out and <laughs> that it's a safe place to put out growths. This little eye, uh, it's not doing anything good or bad, It, but everything around it seems to be going bad so maybe whatever bacterial infection or just point like i don't think it's a virus of any kind i think whatever is in there has traveled through the rhizome and unfortunately i i don't see this going in a positive direction as of like this week so um i I'm, in one way, I'm glad that I took it out of the pot because so that it didn't pass along whatever's happening to it to the other individual. But now I'm thinking I probably need to pull that plant out and give it a full repot and disinfect it and um, just start over with that one because they did share a pot together. And so whatever's in there, you know, it could jump into the next plant even though it appears healthier. But, um, oh, and this is my Ascocentrum. Like, it looks so bad and desiccated and it, it lost all of its leaves in the root. On a happier note, my Epigenium trecorianum has put out a new growth. I was so shocked I was not expecting it, but here it is, I'm so happy. Um, I hope you're having a great day. Thank you for stopping by and hanging out with me. See you next time.